For those of you who don't know how this works, this is a sealed deck format. So we are going to be opening up a bunch of packs. Uh, from those packs, we will construct a deck. And then using that deck, we shall, in fact, destroy all others who have also got their own decks based out of other different packs and do other, other great things. Uh, the first 10 games of each week count towards our total ranking. And then also we can do tiebreakers, which we will probably do. So we're going to go ahead and record our sealed deck choices. We construct our whole setup and we're going to get ourselves going. And then we're going to play some rounds. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so here's our league packs. We got four Duskrow, we got two Omens, and we got two Empty Throne, and we are ready to rock and roll. Let's do it. All right, Failed Reflection is our opener for rare. We have a Trailmaker in here with Soaring Guard, Finback Comanaut, Valkyrie Arcanist, and Silverwing Rallydeer, which may be actually good cards. Uh, this Jotun Punter here is actually super strong early on because removal is going to be fairly limited. So if we see a lot of Yetis in our other packs, we can actually do great things with that. Uh, Trailmaker is pretty strong, and overall looks like there's a reasonable amount of stuff in all of the different setups. Lots of lots of reasonably strong units, no straight removal, anything going on there. Cirrus, how's it going, man? Uh, let's get... So we're doing well, we're playing some sealed. Iceberg Mason, okay, so we have a strong Yeti card, and if we see some other strong Yetis, we can actually get a lot done there. But that's my first Yeti, I think, in two packs, so maybe that might not be a strong solution. Moondial is a pretty powerful card for playing, like, control-style stuff. We wanted to play, like, Elite. Uh, we have a cool Sentinel here. Affliction is good removal. There's been quite a few Valkyrie. Maimed Watchwing and Tandem Watchwing makes more. Soaring Guard makes uh, three in a row in one pack. That's pretty cool. Alright, next up. We have Crest of Cunning, which uh, not a terribly strong rare here, but does give me some fixing if I want to go into a particular color, and it is just a good card to be having. Sinister Opportunist and Jump Kick both look pretty decent. We've got like our standard sort of trick stuff. No hard removal here, so Shadows being uh, much less likely of a possibility. Steady Marshal, Copper All Porter, and Valkyrie Arcanist number two means we might be heading towards some Valkyrie Tribal. We'll see. All right, Dusk Road wise, we have Challenge by Law. Okay, there's our first strong piece of removal, and it's a very, very good one, actually. This is a probably a really crazy draft slash sealed card. We have Auric Record Keeper, which gives us something in time to play with. Fishing Dinox is a pretty big dude. Fasora, Crown Launch Legionnaire, a lot of the cards that are strong in draft will be strong here. Infuse Strike may also be pretty okay. I don't see a lot of uh, themes yet, but we'll be you know figuring that out as we open up our Omens cards. So let's do it. Here we go. Champion of Order. Man, that's a bang-up card in blue and green if we wanted to go for blue, green, and or purple uh, with Valkyries. Because, yeah, this card is crazy if it gets out of control. And if we can actually get like enough influence together, especially through like a Huru Stranger or something like that, that'd be pretty, pretty cool. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be enough. Mortar's very strong. Tranquil Scholar's quite okay. Snapping Brustalker is a powerful card if we can get any sort of killer effect. We'll see. Chat is not appearing on the side. That is because I've got the wrong setup here. So let's do a quick transition. Pew. There we go. All right. Reforge, Vara's Choice, Roosting Owl, High Branch, Sentry, Trail, Runner, Xenon Augury, Lothrian, Memory Keeper, Ice Knuckle, Jotun, and there's a Slay. Ooh. Another strong indication that we might be playing green, purple, and maybe a little bit yellow. We've got some good removal in here. Towering Stranger. Hmm. Uh, that is a very, very big 7-7, seven, seven? like a 7-7 seven, seven overwhelm is not something to be discounted. I don't know if it's going to do anything for a stranger deck, but it is just enormous by itself and very hard to kill. So we'll see about it. Alright, next up, we got Frontier Jito, Plague, uh, Detain, Stalwart Shield, Gilded Glaive, Furnace Mage, uh, Combray Banner in there to get a little fixing going. Might be able to get something going with that. Staff of Stories is our final rare. We have Spirit Drain here as a removal card. Uh, Torch, which is always a strong indicator for fire. It's actually three very strong fire cards here. Uh, maybe even four. Gorilla Fighter would give us a lot of sort of aggression. Thrive Ranger is a strong card on the ground. Loyal Watchwing is another Valkyrie, which adds to some synergy there. And Alchemical Blast, just an okay removal card that we can actually use to supplement ourselves a little bit. Okay. So we haven't added any cards to this deck yet, but we kind of might want to just like throw in the whole pool and see what happens. I'm pretty sure that Frontier Jito is not coming in, so we'll probably cut that one out as like a first option. But let's just let's just uh, fill out the entire setup and see what we got. 
just get a get a good look at our cards, see what the overall distribution is, see if there's any like information that we can glean. My impression is that we're looking at a Arch, an Archenport deck, seeing as we just have a lot of strong cards in green colors. I think we have more green cards than anything else in our pack, so that's actually, yeah, there we go. Look, look at all that green. And a lot of that green includes like strong removal cards, other cool things. The question is, are we going to go three colors? Are we going to splash yellow or blue or red? Because there's actually some pretty strong yellow, blue, and red cards. We have Torch and Magma Jav and a couple of removal cards to supplement our power. We have Fixers and Rampers in yellow, along with, I think, one or two cards in yellow that might actually do something, uh, specifically Moondial. And uh, yeah, like value engines that might actually allow us to crank, along with a little fixing in the form of Auric Record Keeper and Combre, which is, well, uh, Auric Record Keeper is not fixing, but uh, yeah, that is a very strong hybrid card. Okay, so strong hybrid choices. We are rewarded pretty heavily for going Combre with some aggression. Rewarded for control with a bomb card in green-blue if we can get all of the influence together, which we might not be able to. We're rewarded, rewarded for going Argentport with a powerful removal card. We're rewarded for going Skycrag with a less powerful removal card, but still a good one that also has a finisher on it. And we also have Towering Stranger as a bonus, which I would say is neither here nor there, but is a decent enough finisher. Overwhelm is kind of an evasive ability. We could definitely do something with that. We go Xenon, we get Vara's Choice, which is very strong. Xenon Augury makes no difference either way. Uh, Failed Reflection and Combust, both pretty strong in Stonescar if we have enough basic sacrifice stuff. Uh, specifically, we'd be looking at Blink Wolf, we'd be looking at Spark Hatchers, and we'd be looking at any Shadow cards we picked up that actually die. Uh, but one thing I'm not seeing is an abundance of 1 and 2 drops in Purple Red. Uh, we could do Tumble Bang, so that gives us a little bit of something. Yeah, there's a couple of cards here. I feel like the unit is just not the units are just not there in purple red. So that seems fairly unlikely to be our overall strategy. Uh, but we'll see if that might end up being a thing. Okay. So uh, again, I'm seeing yeah, you see a lot of strong cards in a lot of different setups. I kind of wish I could do more. Basically, like yeah, just squirreling around here. But yeah, look at that. 26 Justice cards, 21 Shadow, 21 Fire. I only have 15 Time and 16 Primal. So Time and Primal are very, very light splashes unless we are looking for really specific Primal cards. And let's actually just start to cut away some Primal cards and see what we feel like. Because I think the Unseals are gone, right? Electropy seems pretty unlikely to be a thing. Iceberg Mason gives us Yetis, but... We saw no other yetis, right? There was just Jotun Punter, so that's not going to happen. Sinister Opportunist, uh, bonus from being cursed, which I think we got no curses. Uh, our attachment count is pretty light overall, and yeah, that seems unlikely. Jump Kick may still be a splash. Sinister Opportunist is unlikely to be anything. Uh, other blue cards include Stormcrasher, which is reasonably strong. Fasora, which is okay if we got dinosaurs running. I'm going to go ahead and take a guess that we're not running dinosaurs. And uh, yeah, like overall, looks like blue is probably out. Staff of Stories is the big reason to keep in here. Ice Knuckle Jotun's out. Mantasaur and Arachnidon are both dinosaurs for late game dinos, which we don't really have. So that leaves Staff, which maybe, like it is a strong enough card on its own that if we get a ton of fixing in different colors, we could maybe go for it. But uh, Cumbria Banner Crest of Cunning is our only blue fixing, so... Yeah, Crest of Cunning is our only blue fixing. That means we're probably completely out of blue. Let's go ahead and cut Stormcrasher. That card's gone. Um, Jump Kick, that card's gone. We'll keep the Staff of Stories around for kicks, but I think that it's most likely going to jump out in just a second here. All right, so that eliminates one color. We've got Shadow, Justice, and Fire available here. And looking at what we got, I mean, yeah, there's some strong indicators for Fire. I like Magma Javelin, Reforge. I like Wandering Forge a little bit, but relic-wise, I don't think we're looking super happy here. We've got eight attachments total. One of them is Magma Javelin. One of them is Stalwart Shield. Yeah, I think our overall relic setup looks pretty lame unless we're running Moondial. So Wandering Forge is the one thing that comes out of this alive. Dustblind, nah. Tumblebang, probably not. Um, I don't think I'm going for the Stone Scar setup, so let's not do the Sacrifice thing. Now... Spark Hatchers and First Shot Rioters, maybe, but Jito's definitely out. I got no one drops worth running. Blink Wolf is a disposable two drop and a pretty good splash, and Torch is a cool splash as well. So if we wanted to go for just splashes, we could probably cut 
a wolf, hatcher, rioter, and everything but torch and mortar. And then we'd have like a little bit of like red blue splash, maybe do something with that. But Ellen Sniper's too deep in red, I think I'm not there. Powder Cake Rider's out, Wandering Forge's out, Gorilla Fighter's out. Yeah, basically this is all looks pretty, pretty unlikely for red. Uh, we'll keep an eye on these sort of big bombs and see if we want to fit them in, but most likely these are also going to get cut. And Reforge, I would say, is out. I don't see anything worth uh, reforging except for Staff of Stories, which is admittedly one of my bombs. So if we see like a really strong way towards red-blue control with uh, another splash of some kind, maybe that happens. But uh, yeah, we'll just keep an eye on it. Tempered Sentinel is out. I'm not running Sentinels, I think. And then time-wise, Sauropod Wrangler, that's an okay card. Trailmaker and Temple Scribe, those are okay cards. Trail Runner's definitely not all that useful. Gloaming Wisp is a cool fixer. Last Light Infusion only cares about Nightfall, which I don't see a Nightfall theme happening here. There's no cards that really benefit from it. Fishing Dinoc benefits from Dinos, which we've already said we're not in. Tower Top Patrol, no. Snapping Breaststalker would be kind of cool if we had any sort of killer effect that we could put on it, but nope, nothing any in that vein is looking good here so that's very unlikely to make the cut which means sentinel is also out and i'd say overall time our only thing that we want to hold on to here is moon dial so let's go ahead and cut the time out oh auric record keeper is a nice splash too so eh, you know if we have a reason to go for yellow that might be it so that leaves us as suspected in Argent Fort. That seems where to be where our strengths lie. We'll look at uh, splashes and a couple of other colors, but yeah, just by process of elimination, this is where the this is where the necessary cards are. Towering Stranger seems like a pretty obvious cut. I'm just not seeing it here. It's an okay splash if I have all of the other stuff, but yeah, it seems very unlikely that I'm gonna have both red and blue at the top. Okay, so Looking at where our fixers lie, the Crest of Cunning allows us to splash a little blue, which might be useful for mm, Staff of Stories. So a Staff of Stories is a double blue splash, and then we'd have to have Mortar as well. I feel like blue is the first color out. Say goodbye to Staff and that other card, Crest of Cunning. We will actually keep just because it is a crest, like having a crest is really useful. Um, and do I see any other blue cards here? I'm not seeing the one remaining blue card that's supposed to be in here. Champion of Order. Oh, that one's a sad loss, actually. A doubling green card, though. Not as good if it's not doubling in copies. So, yeah, that card probably goes. All right. Hey, Sir Adiox. How's it going? Uh, oh, I don't have a key phrase for that in Nightbot. We might actually add it at some point. I've never, I've never heard that used. Is that just automatically sub you, or is that like a... I assume it's like clicking the sub button, figuring that thing out. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll, I'll fiddle with that if that is an actual command that people use. Um, okay, so Xenon, Fanatic, Trigger Man, Gun Rustler. Okay, I did see some amount of gun stuff. Xenon Fanatic may be a path to victory, so let's look very carefully and see if there's any sort of life gain effects that we really want to run in. Xenon Augury is a possibility. Uh, in fact, there is some reason to splash yellow still, right? Vara's Choice, Auric Record Keeper, Journeyman Armorer, though I'm pretty sure that's gone. Uh, okay, Blink Wolf and First Shot Rider. Blink Wolf is not worth a splash. Neither is Spark Hatcher, although I do like it for Combust. Let's go ahead and cut Combust as well. Magma Javelin and Torch, and maybe Combust are possibilities. First Shot Rioter is good if we have enough Gunslingers, but I'm looking at my Gunslingers and I'm seeing one. Like, I'm seeing just one. Steady Marshal here. Then next Gunslinger is First Shot. Frontier Confessor is a Gunslinger. So there's a Gunslinger at four, at least, which would give me something to ally with. Trigger Man bonds with Gunslingers. Which is okay if we have a couple of things. I'm not sure if Trigger Man's going to make the cut. We'll see. As a 3-3 three, three for 5 with Quick Draw, he's okay. It's not great. Yeah, I think uh, I think we were definitely always leaning towards Argent Port. I just wanted to explore the other colors and see if there was anything good, which uh, turns out there were a couple of options. M mainly Staff of Stories Mortar seemed like really interesting stuff if we wanted to play like four color removal pile, but my removal overall is pretty limited and I'm just not into it. So let's cut First Shot Rider. That seems very unlikely to make the cut. 
now we have some red splash that may be worth it. Uh, Magma, Javelin, and Torch are both very, very light. And we have some yellow splash that may be worth it. Vara's Choice and Auric Record Keeper are both very, very light, but they're also pretty low to the ground. So we'll hold on to either of these colors if we feel that it's going to be appropriate. Combray Banner gives us a little fixing there. Granite Waystone, not really fixing and doesn't really give us anything to play with, so we'll probably just cut that out now. I'm looking at 51 out of my 45 cards, and four of these cards are already power. So we need to cut quite a bit more to get things going. Okay, looking at cards that gain health, we have Infused Strike. That's a pretty strong one. Uh, we have... Is that it? Infused Strike. So plus three, plus one, which tends to be like a, uh, you know, like a seven or eight health gain. Decent way to get some damage across. Spirit Blade Stalker gives us Life Steal, which is pretty strong. Um, Gilded Glaive on something that has that is fairly okay. Tranquil Scholar can give life steal, but it's not an amazing thing. Xenon Augury gives us a little bit of life steal. I think overall Xenon Fanatic is not doing it, even with Spirit Drain at the top. That's like four different sources, some of which are a little bit too awkward. So we're going to cut this guy out. Okay, other options. Failed Reflection, that's a double red influence splash. Not going to happen. Even at six, that card is okay, but not amazingly strong, and I think it's just not worth the splash. Okay, so leaning very strongly towards yellow here. Getting access to Varus Choice and Auric Record Keeper is, I feel, stronger than getting access to Torch and Magma Javelin. I really like the access to Torch, but I don't need to splash for it. I think we just cut that and cut that, and suddenly we're out of red. Now we have a very, very light splash of yellow, which uh, works out for us, because it leads us with that Combre banner. And we have Crest of Cunning to fix for maybe a little bit of blue if we need to, or just... Uh, hold on to it. I think there's nothing in blue that we specifically need, but might be worth looking at if we really, really want to. Threaten. Very, very cruddy weapon, essentially, but it is a permanent buff to a unit, and it can be used with quick draw, so we won't discount it immediately. I'd say look real quick to see if there is any quick draw. Yeah, that's pretty much building itself out, so there we go. One less spell. I've got 26 units, 5 attachments, and 11 spells at the moment. I need to cut uh, a good 10, 15 cards right now. Got four, so 42 cards that aren't power, which means we have to cut, yeah, a solid 12 cards, I would say. Sample hand card doesn't work in League. You might have to add power first. Okay, so Cripple's Removal, that's reasonably strong. I'm seeing a very strong Valkyrie setup, Loyal Watchwing, Named Watchwing, uh, High Branch Sentry cares about Mentors, which, I don't know, as a basic 3-drop, I think it's stronger than Uthrai Memory Keeper, so we'll definitely cut that card first, and then see how our 3-drops are sorted out, right? We have Auric, High Branch, we're really, really glutted on 3s, so there are some cards that we could cut uh, here. Skeeter seems like a possibility, Signal Flag seems like a possibility, even though I do have Valkyrie allies, uh, Tranquil Scholars amongst them. Okay. Overall Valkyrie sources, I'm seeing Soaring Guard, Rampart Protector is not a Valkyrie, but it is something that benefits from having Valkyrie. This card seems very unlikely to last long enough to make a huge difference, but could be strong. Frontier Confessors, uh, Gunslinger, Vainglory, and Valkyrie Militant both look like they quite belong here. I'd say Xenon Augury is a reasonable way to get things going, but not really all that worth it as a splash. Headsman's Axe. Now this is a 5 cost weapon, but it is actually a pretty big one that happens to help out a lot if you've got a lot of Valkyrie in the Void. We have a ton of units in the Void most of the time here, so this might stick as a finisher. That and Stalwart Shield both give us ways to actually win in the air, which is something I'm going to have to have to pay attention to. Gun Rustler. Almost never have a reason to use this card. Same with Finback Comanaut. I think either of these are looking for different strategies that I'm not looking for, so let's just cut them out. Silvering Rallier, yes, I think I want this. This is a big, big finisher in a Valkyrie deck. We have some Valkyrie that can actually work it, so I think it's well worth playing. So that leaves us with four sixes, five sixes. Trigger Man seems like it's probably gone as much as I like Quick Draw here. Uh, Weapon-wise, we have Gilded Glaive, we have Stalwart Shield, we have Headsman's Axe. Uh, so a quick draw unit could actually be quite devastating on the ground. And the the bond is not bad either. Uh, Steady Marshal's okay early, and then Frontier Confessor's okay late. That's basically it for our Gunslingers though, right? Hmm. 
a little bit tricky, a little bit on the tricky side. 23 units right now, 5 attachments and 10 spells. Really want to be looking at those spells with a, a wary eye. Detain is a possibility. It is a trick that I don't really need, and I've got Vara's choice in here too, so let's cut Detain. That seems like the first thing that's probably going to go. Cripple, okay spell, not anything amazing. It's really not as good as Affliction, especially since it's a slow spell, and it's much, much worse. But uh, it is an okay removal option, and we do need those to sort of get things moving. Only Relic Weapon right now is Signal Flag. Yeah, it seems fairly unlikely to be tossed out. Reinforce, I would agree, is going to get tossed. There's not really enough Relic Weapon support for it, uh, so Reinforce is definitely out. Okay, 40 out of 45 now, along with four of these, so six, seven more cards to cut at least. Um, signal Flag is still a card that I'm not sure about keeping. I'm blooded on threes right now. I kind of want High Branch Sentries just because they're three threes for three. There's not really anything wrong with having that kind of meat on the ground early, and uh, it benefits pretty well with the amount of flyers that we're laying down to have some units that are kind of tough and capable of trading with smaller units and keeping some tempo going. So I feel like high branch sentry is going to be super, super average, and that's actually something the deck needs. Let's cut signal flag out. Uh, I like the war cry. Hmm. I don't know. It's minor removal for all sorts of small threats, uh, and it does benefit from Valkyrie stuff happening. We'll see about that. Headsman's Axe is a possibility. Uh, Stalwart Shield's probably not a possibility. I would say that card's way too strong against blue decks. And I would say that blue decks are going to get chosen sometimes. We're going to see as much of those as we're going to see any other part of the field. Slay is super powerful. Alchemical Blast is pretty weak. Alchemical Blast uh, Plague is actually very strong as well. So that and Signal Flag might be a little too much on the one-drop threat side. <sighs> hmm... I'd say Signal Flag is on the short list. Skeeter seems fine here. We have Gilded Glaive. We have a couple of good things to put on it. It's nice to have a big lifesteal unit in the air. I mean, that card can actually get some stuff done if we keep all of our weapons together. Uh, by that logic, I think I'm probably on the side of cutting out Gunslingers, although I do like Frontier Confessor and Trigger Man together. We'll take a look at that. Okay, Valkyrie Arcanist seems totally fine. That gives us more weapons to put on stuff. More weapons to put on stuff, I think, is definitely part of our plan. Cripple is doing some of the same things Alchemical Blast is doing. Cripple is doing it a little bit better. Okay. So we're currently at 23 units, and I kind of wanted to stay there as much as I can. I feel like Gunslingers are still not the plan. And I'm going to follow my instinct and cut Trigger Man and Steady Marshal. As much as I like Trigger Man with a weapon, eh, seems unlikely to really do the thing. Okay. Affliction, Copper Hall Porter, Infused Strike with Thrive Ranger, Rampart Protector, and Soaring Guard. Uh, lots of good early stuff, I'd say. Infused Strike is actually a reasonably strong option that'll actually get us a lot of benefit. Signal Flag is still probably my weakest removal card, and that seems like the next card to go, since we are still pretty glutted on threes. Loyal Watchwing is a Valkyrie. I shouldn't ditch any Valkyrie at the moment. Crown Watch Legionnaire is our lifesteal unit on the ground. Skeeter's our lifesteal unit in the air. Both are pretty good if we got weapons. Cripple seems like a pretty likely cut, considering how many fours we've got. Valkyrie, Militant, and Vainglory have to stay. Uh, these three have to stay, so Cripple by default is the next card out. Headsman's Axe is still a possibility for the cut. Um, I actually like Stalward Shield a lot. I like Gilded Glaive a lot. I don't see Headsman's Axe as being incredibly strong here. I think it is a reasonable card, especially if we're generating tokens or doing something crazy, but I don't think we're doing enough crazy, and Valkyrie Arcanist is covering this slot pretty well. So that gives us... We have plenty of strong weapons here. Valkyrie Arcanist plus Stalward Shield plus Gilded Glaive. I think we can probably be okay without having one of those. That puts me to 35 out of 45. Uh, Emerald Monument, Waystone, Combray Banner, and Crest of Cunning are all staying, especially Crest, even though we don't have blue. Um, so that leaves us with, yeah, one to two cuts left. Uh, I would say, let's look at our curve one more time. Really, really strong on threes, no fives. The sixes are a little bit much. The seven plus is probably going to be a six. So I've got 
One, two, three, four, five, six sixes. That's a little bit worrying. Roosting Owl does something strong. Um, not something terribly strong in Valkyries, though. Like, uh, I don't have anything super beefy to equip it on. So that may be the card that we ditch. This card did have to get nerfed specifically because it was very, very powerful. But so did Valkyrie Arcanist. Um, hmm. Yeah, both of these are interesting options. I'd say that and Spirit Drain are all in intrinsically weird. I'd say Roosting Owl seems like the most likely to take the cut here. That puts us at 20. Uh, Spirit Drain is still a possibility for outing. So is Valkyrie Arcanist. Uh, I feel like I want to keep both Valkyrie Arcanists, though. So we have the full setup. Powers 18 is what it suggests, and uh, that doesn't seem out of the question. Looking at our time choices, Auric Record Keeper and Varus Choice are the only two options that have stayed in. They're an unusual splash. Auric Record Keeper is very, very strong, like beyond a doubt. And Vara's Choice, yeah, it's pretty good too. But are they worth splashing time? Because I've got three time sources in here at the moment, plus Combray Banner. That's four sources. The chances of me drawing Auric Record Keeper or Vara's Choice are pretty tough. If I cut them, I very easily fix all of my power issues. I don't have to do any other cuts of other types. So uh, we don't have any power issues. We have one less removal card, and we have one less kind of decent unit at three. Although right now my three slot's super glutted, so I'm not too worried about losing some threes. That's a pretty strong case for it. Oric Record Keeper is not strong enough to carry the draft on its own. And Vara's Choice, as much as I love it, not worth splashing all the time for. All right, so let's, oops, accidentally cut the waystone. We'll add that back in in a second. Eight, six, and an emerald monument. Let's get the waystone in here. And that means we have to cut a justice sigil. Re-add the power, there we go. Eight, one, one, five. Combray banner, crest of cunning. Combray banner's out now, because we don't need it. Looks like uh, it's replacing a Shadow Sigil there, so that's interesting. That actually does give us a better balance of green and purple. Um, yeah, and overall, I think it looks strong. I think we're we're pretty well on. We have 19 units, 3 attachments, 6 spells. 17 power total. I'd like to get that unit count up a little bit. What would we ditch if we wanted to do that? Cut the Alchemical Blast for one gunslinger of some kind perhaps uh like we didn't ditch frontier confessor right yeah we could ditch we could add that uh that five drop quick draw back in that's another big unit i'm not sure i love it i think i'm probably more on the side of the alchemical blast signal flag could come back in here um as a unit or weapon type base but i don't know i feel like i'm not gonna need signal flag so let's go ahead and call that good all right, our pool was relatively strong. We had some decent removal in there. We didn't have anything crazy as far as bombs go. Staff of Stories was the only bomb to build around, and we decided not to do it. We decided to go tempo. Um, Tempo-wise, we have okay twos, extremely good threes. Our middle game looks better than our early game, so we want to basically try and take the middle game as much as we can. Uh, we'll see how good it ends up being. Let's go.